Welcome to the Not Old Better Show. I'm your host, Paul Vogelsang. For our second conversation with what makes it great composer, conductor, lecturer, and music expert Rob Capolo, I caught up with him just before he went on stage at the Baird Auditorium here in Washington, D.C., where Rob unlocked the secrets of master songwriter Harold Arlen. This interview is a companion to our recent conversation with Rob when we discussed at length the almost anonymous Arlen, whose vast songbook is well known, although the composer isn't, of such great songs like Get Happy, Last Night When We Were Young, Stormy Weather, That Old Black Magic, and Over the Rainbow, which was voted the number one song of the 20th century by the Recording Industry Association of America and the National Endowment for the Arts. This evening's performance featured singers Michael Winther and Nikki Renee Daniels, both with stellar voices, Broadway credits, and perfectly matched for the Capolo versions of the music that they sing while Rob plays. As you know, for more than a decade, Capolo has brought the joys and wonder of music to audiences of all ages and backgrounds with his What Makes It Great presentations, which dissect and examine the mystery of music in terms everyone can grasp and appreciate. Part one of the evening is really this entertaining discussion displaying Rob's astounding gift for observation and his very animated style of teaching. Part two features these beautiful compositions uh, sung tonight, of course, by Winther and uh, Nikki Renee Daniels. And then part three concludes with a very spirited question and answer on all of the work that they've performed. We, of course, had some questions for Rob. We got a chance to ask him and listen to a little bit of the pre-show rehearsal music before the audience, and, and it was a treat. I'm with Rob Capolo. We're backstage at the Baird Auditorium. Uh, Rob's here today to uh, perform at uh, the Smithsonian Associates Program, and Rob, of course, famously does the What Makes It Great. Uh, Rob, uh, welcome to the show again. Thanks. Happy to be here. Great. Well, I've, of course, had a chance to sit a little bit in the audience. We've got some of the music that I was able to record playing in the background. You hear some voices. So you've got, you've got some guest artists here tonight, too. So maybe talk, introduce our audience to who it is that you're bringing along on these. Because it's, it's you, of course, but it's also you've got some other voices. Absolutely. Uh, well, we've got uh, two singers. We've got Michael Winther, um, who is actually currently on the uh, national tour of Fun Home. And actually, he was in Durham, North Carolina yesterday, and he's going to Chicago with his show tomorrow. So he literally drove all last night from Durham, North Carolina, got in at two in the morning to be able to do this show here. Um, Michael and I have done a lot of these American Songbook shows together. In fact, pretty much every one that I've ever done, at least in one incarnation, has had Michael, the Gershwin show or the Porter show or the Bernstein show. And so since I know him very well and he's done this show, we wanted to have him be able to do it. And even though he's on this big national tour, he somehow managed to be able to get here and somehow between Durham, North Carolina and Chicago tomorrow, he was able to make the rental car trip. So uh, Michael's been here a lot before. Um, Nikki Renee Daniels is actually doing this for us for the very first time. Uh, she's actually currently on Broadway in the Book of Mormon. And she actually, several months ago when I asked her to do this, asked for a day off. So literally, she is here instead of being on Broadway today doing the Sunday show. Um, so it's really great to have somebody like her actually being willing to do this. And for her, I think it's a, you know, it's a, a wonderful kind of day off because she's been doing the Book of Mormon for, I think, over a year now. And so at least it's something different, Harold Arlen. Uh, and she amazingly took a nine o'clock train down this morning and rehearsed with us this afternoon and then she'll do the show tonight and then she's taking the train back from Washington tonight. So it's quite a day off for Nikki, but it's really great to have these two singers together and uh, because of Michael's tour, the only time we were able to rehearse was before Michael's tour began. So our last rehearsal was the first week of September, which was, you know, about two months before, you know, the, the show. So uh, we actually finally got together today and Michael drove in, she trained in, and uh, we're all here together finally this afternoon to do the show. Well, you can tell there's a lot of dedication. There's a lot of love yes, for this yeah. music. Absolutely. And I also heard a little bit of talk about the Capolo versions yeah. of some of these songs. So 
tell our audience a little bit about what that term means. What is the capillary? Well, very often, you know, I mean, I, I was a student of Nadia Boulanger, and she always used to say to us, you know, if you really want to understand what makes a composer great, rewrite their music in other ways, and then you'll discover that what they wrote was actually the best version. So I'm constantly rewriting these pieces, changing a rhythm, changing a melody note, changing a harmony, really in order to demonstrate in comparison to my quote unquote capillo or ordinary version, what it is that actually makes this music so special. And in many of these cases, it's so easy to hear, you know, one little change of a rhythm or one change of a note or one extra note in a chord completely makes the music sound different. Um, and one of my big themes really over and over and what makes it great is that the difference between good and great is both enormous and infinitesimal. It's hundreds of these inspired little choices. And I really like to do, it's sort of a signature I guess of my, you know, to actually write these versions that are just slightly different and then in comparing the slightly different ordinary version with the actual version, you really can hear in a very clear way what makes it special and what makes it great. The other distinctive thing that I think is uh, present uh, uh, is this auditorium. Uh -huh. It's a beautiful space. Yeah. The acoustics seem perfectly they're suited. They're quite nice. Yeah, they're really good. And also it's very intimate. It's about, I think it's about 600 people or something like that, which is a really nice size. You know, I mean, I do these, you know, I did Toronto Symphony last week for 2,500 people. It's a very different feeling. But here, um, also particularly the way the hall is laid out, everyone feels quite close to you and you feel like you can have a conversation with them. There's a lot of audience participation in this program where they sing as well. And it's very easy to see who is and who isn't singing. <laughs> Uh, you know, so I might not be wrong. Yeah, so. that's all right. Um, <laughs> but everyone is, is feels close together. It feels very intimate. It feels like a conversation. And particularly for this kind of program, which is both performance, but also conversation with the audience, it feels very easy to converse with them in a space like this. So it's very intimate. It's also very informal in a way. It doesn't feel stuffy or anything like that. You feel like you're right there with them. So it's a perfect space for this kind of event. Well, we're thrilled to have you here in D.C., and I know you're going to be coming back, and we're going to talk to you a little bit more mm -hmm. on another date about some of that stuff. But I think the, the other thing that is really of, of interest to, to my audience is, is kind of just the process that you go through to kind of pick music to deconstruct. What, what in your mind is the ideal song to kind of, you know, really work on and well, create a capital over? Um, as I say, um, some of the programs I do are like this, which are American Songbook. Most of the programs I do are actually a classical single piece. In other words, not a song. You know, last week I did um, Gershwin's American in Paris with an orchestra in L.A. And then a week before that, you know, I did uh, Pictures and an Exhibition with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. So very often it's a classical piece. Um, often it's a piece that's well known um, for both two reasons, really. One, because obviously it's, you know, it's something that attracts people to hear a piece they know. But also because... When you know something well, you're actually in a better position to actually appreciate what you've missed. Um, so oftentimes for me, the best songs to take apart are the ones that people think they know by heart and have learned, for example, Over the Rainbow um, in today's program is one of my favorite songs because there isn't a person who doesn't know the song by heart. And therefore, in a way, by showing them how much they've missed even in the music that they think they know well, it sort of opens up the possibility of them exploring all the music that they don't so well know so well. So I like to do things that people really know well. In classical music, I like doing Vivaldi Four Seasons. I like doing Mozart's Eine Klein and Nach music. Things that people already have a head start on and know the music, but therefore you can show them how much they've missed in what they already think they know. You, you are busy, there's no question about it, and, and we're thrilled. It, it just means that more people can get to experience some of this wonderful music that, that you really are responsible for. The other interesting thing that I found about you, and if you could talk a little bit about this too, because I think this, is, this might be news to a lot of people, and that is the, the tablet versions of the books mm -hmm. that you've done. And that's really an interesting kind of development because well, for one, it's using the technology in a really smart way, but for mm -hmm. another, it's really allowing people to kind of experience this music, not just on a printed page, but right. literally. That's yeah, well, you know, I think for hundreds of years, at least throughout the history of books, you've had two choices if you wanted to write a book about music and both were bad. In either you put musical notation into a book, 
and then 95% of the world who can't read music notation couldn't really read your book, or you didn't put music notation in your book, and then it would be sort of like an art book but without the pictures. Um, the new technology, what has allowed me to do, and I did this in my second book, What Makes It Great If You Get the Enhanced Edition, um, which can be played on any tablet, is I put in 200 musical examples in notation, but all you have to do is touch them on the tablet, they explode to full screen, and then not only do they play, but there's a scroll bar that moves over the music in real time as it plays, and the comments are written right on the music notation, just as if I were here doing a What Makes It Great. So you don't have to read a note of music, but you can hear what I'm talking about, and you can actually see the exact moment that I'm referring to because it's written on the music and the scroll bar goes past it as you're actually hearing it. So for the very first time, the technology has made it possible to hear everything that you would hear at a live What Makes It Great program in a book without me being there and without there being any need whatsoever to read a note of music. And I think that's just an enormous revolution in the possibilities of writing books about music. And everything that I will write, my new book also coming out, will have that kind of thing. But just, it allows anyone without any ability to read music to hear exactly what I'm talking about and know exactly the moment I'm referring to. Yeah. So it's, it's wonderful. It's brilliant. It is, it is wonderful. And we'll have you back and we'll talk about that. We'll have you back and we'll talk about some of these upcoming performances. I'm, I'm excited about the performance tonight. Me it's too. really going to be wonderful at the Baird Auditorium here with Rob Capolo. Uh, Rob, thanks for joining us for a few minutes. We really appreciate your time. I know you're busy. My pleasure. To a place behind the sun Just a step beyond the rain Wow, what a beautiful voice she has. That, of course, was Nikki Renee Daniels singing Over the Rainbow by Harold Arlen. I hope you enjoyed this show. It was just a treat to talk to Rob. Pleasure to meet him and to see him do his wonderful work, What Makes It Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to all my guests today, all the help on the podcast. Thanks to all. Thanks to all.